Okay. Well, hello, Move Easy Movers. Welcome to Move Easy Yoga with Kathy. Today is already Saturday, December 9th, or whatever day you're watching this video. Our focus today is going to be a little bit of hips, a little bit of butt, a little bit of core. So basically all this area here. And for props, you'll want your trusty chair. We're not only going to use it at the beginning for our static rest, but we'll be using it in the middle of class. So either a chair or something you can stand up and sit down, stand up and sit down on. Um, a couch might work. Uh, uh, they call them hussocks, tufts. That might work as well. Um, hold on. Somebody's trying to get in. Bear with me. Dana's trying to get in. Um, hold on. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with our regular static rest, seven minute static rest. So back on the floor, legs up on a chair, lower legs parallel to the floor or the ceiling. Make sure you've got something to rest your head on. Your hips should be a few inches away from the base. And you want to just breathe normally. Your hips are at neutral. You'll want that natural curve in your back. So breathe normally. Your arms are wherever they're most comfortable. Out at your sides. Cactus arms. Whatever works for you. And just bring yourself, your awareness, into the room. We're going to be here for seven minutes. There she is. Kathy? Oh, hey, Dana. I'm here. Okay. We're doing static rest. So just get into position. I get to make it. Okay.
You keep muting me. I don't know why. I I need to mute you. Oh, you need to mute me? Yeah. I hear what you're doing. <laughs> Everybody gets muted. Okay, seven minutes is up. Go ahead and stay where you are. Um, and what you what we're going to do is do a cervical rotation. So slowly, if you want, you can curl your tongue under the roof of your mouth and slowly move your head from right to left. Do it very slowly and do it six times. And I'll give you a minute. Okay, finish up. And the next thing we're going to do, and we're all familiar with this, is vagus nerve reset. So, as I said, we're all familiar with this. Your head is forward and it stays stationary. Only your eyes move. So you start by moving your eyes to the right and wait, wait for that vagus nerve to activate. And you'll feel either a sigh, swallow, yawn or gulp so your head is straight forward just your eyes are going to the right and uh, excuse me all i have to do is think about it and it happens for me because i do it all the time give it a minute and complete that yawn or sigh or swallow or gulp and then bring your eyes back to center and then move just your eyes to the left. And again, wait for that sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. Ah. Mm. If you haven't done this in a while, it may not happen for you, but that's okay. Now, I'd like you to do this two more times on each side without my cueing at your own pace. All right, finish up. And the next thing we're doing is head ramping. So you can leave whatever you have under your head if you choose. 
or you can switch it out for a sponge ball or a set of therapy balls. What we're doing here is reversing text neck. If you're like me, I'm always looking down at my devices or a book or my projects or my baking or just always looking down. <laughs> and so your neck is constantly in that position. So what we want to do is stretch that part of our neck that's always going forward. We want to pull it backward. So the back of your neck, the occipital ridge, the bony part between your ears, runs along your scalp line. You want to push that away from your body, whether you're sitting up or lying down. You can do this in either position. So press, hold, just a minute and then release and we'll do this three more times press hold and release oh excuse me this will also activate your vagus nerve and you may get the same reaction you did when we were doing the vagus nerve reset in my case it makes me yawn some more so, let's press, hold, and release. And again, press, hold, and release. Good job. Okay. Now, breathing exercise today is one of my favorites, and it's square breathing. I like it because it's, um, I don't know, I just, I like it. It's very rounded. So basically it's the count of four. You inhale for four, you hold for four, you exhale for four, and you hold again for four. So we'll do this about three times in a row. So Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Last time, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Okay, good job. I do that sometimes when I'm stuck in traffic because traffic is one thing that really irritates me and I find myself calming down. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna do is vacuum. You can stay in this position if you choose or you can move away from your couch or chair or move the chair away from you. And again, in this, for this next thing, um, you can be in any position that is best for you. You can be legs up on a chair, legs up a wall, feet flat, knees bent, that's fine. I personally like to extend my legs. You can have them apart if that works or together. It's up to you. What we're going to do is we're working on our pelvic floor here. We're gonna take a normal breath and we're gonna exhale everything out of our lungs, pull the air out, push your belly button down towards the floor, flatten your lower back to the floor and hold everything out for the count of 10 and then release. And we'll do this two or three times. So again, normal inhale through your nose and then exhale every 
every bit of air out of your lungs. Create your vacuum. Push your belly button to the floor, your lower back to the floor. Hold it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Release. Inhale. Give yourself a minute to come back to normal breathing. Takes a couple of breaths. Okay. Once you've gone back to normal, take a normal inhale through the nose. Fill your lungs. Now empty your lungs completely. Exhale everything out of your lungs. Create that vacuum, belly button to the floor. Hold it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale. And take a couple of breaths here. We'll do this one more time. Okay, normal inhale. Exhale everything out of your lungs. Hold it out. Create that vacuum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Release. Breathe. It's always good to breathe. <laughs> okay. Now, since we're down here, we're going to loosen up our, our hips a little bit. So, knees bent, feet about shoulder width apart. And let's try some mini slow windshield wipers. Just warming up here. Just saying, hello, good morning, hips, wake up. So just slow, maybe a third of the way down, even though I know you can go further. Start out slow and easy. Kind of like Tina Turner, slow and easy. We're not going to end hard and fast, but we're going to start slow and easy. <clears throat> And then if you're feeling up to it, you can take them a little further, still moving slowly. Maybe halfway down. And then again, your choice. If you if you feel like you're um, able to without pain, widen your feet about the width of the mat, and let's do wide leg, but only come down maybe halfway, or even at just a third of the way. If you feel a pull when your knees are are to the right or left, stop there and then change direction. Everybody is different. So you may feel that pull when you're way high or when you're lower. So it's up to you. We're still moving slowly. Moving slowly allows the brain to register what the rest of the body is doing. Makes it more effective. And then if you can bring your knees down a little further, your hip will rise. If you want to stay at just doing it a third of the way down, that's fine too. If this hurts your hip, don't do it. If any part of this gives you pain, don't do it. Now, pain and stretch, a stretch feeling are two different things. When you bring both knees down to the floor, the, the opposite hip will rise. Now you can move your head either 
in the opposite direction or in the same direction, if you choose. This way we're engaging the entire body, pretty much from the shoulders down, and turn it into a twist or just roll with it. We're still moving slowly though. This is actually a really good warm up. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Um, the next thing we're doing is bent knee leg lifts. So basically bring your feet back to shoulder width apart. And they're flat on the floor, your knees are bent. And we're just gonna raise, keeping the same bend in your knee, just raise the leg and put it back down. This helps activate the hip movement. So that was the right leg. Let's go up with the left leg and put it back down. And then up with the right and back down. A very simple movement, but this is really good for warming up the hips. And then up and down and up and down. One more time, up and down. Okay, good job. Now the next thing we're doing is they're called knee drops. And again, you wanna be very careful if you feel pain you want to limit your movement. So basically, again, your feet are flat, they're shoulder width apart, and you just drop your knee to one side. Go as far as is comfortable for you. If it gives you, if you feel an ache in your hip when you're down this far, just go this far. And then the other leg, and up, and then down, and up. You don't need to go all the way to the floor with this one, even if you can. The movement is actually right here, right in this area where you're doing the most good. And up. And down. And up. Let me angle myself a little bit better. There we go. Down and up. And down and up. Notice my feet aren't really moving. They are tilting, but they're not moving. Like this would be moving. Just drop in the knee as far as is comfortable, bringing it back up, dropping the knee. I feel this in my hips. I don't know about you. And one more time, down and up and down and up. All right. Okay, that was a triplet. Let's come up to sitting. Come up any way you choose, but be gentle. Don't move too fast. I need to move my mat a little. Small space here. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna do our regular uh, stretches, side bend with lat stretch. So let me get my timer. Slide your hand along the mat. The upper arm comes up and over. Keep both six bones on the floor. Keep facing forward. Just lean over as far as you can, keeping your both hips on the floor. Just be aware of where you're feeling this. Now take your upper arm and lower it until it's parallel to the floor. You'll feel a different stretch. So reach 
for that wall with that arm. Reach, reach, reach. This is a great stretch. Here we go. Arm up. Or so up. Okay. Other side. Hand along the mat. Upper arm comes up and over. Just reach as far as you can. Be aware of where you're feeling this. I'm feeling this all the way up my side. Keeping both hips on the floor. Now lower your arm till it's parallel to the floor and reach. In my case, I'm reaching for a corner here. Reach, reach, reach. You'll feel a different stretch under your arm, down your back, latissimus dorsi. All right. Arm up, or so up. Good job. Let's switch our legs. So we don't want to sit in one position too long. When I do that, my feet fall asleep. <laughs> We're going to do our rotation now. This is a thoracic rotation. Thoracic just means upper back. So, again, it's 40 seconds. So, right hand on left knee or excuse me, left hand on right knee, or whichever. Your other hand is spider fingers, and it's behind you. You rotate your shoulders to the short side of the mat as far as you can go without pain. So you're not going to go all the way. Nobody can, but just as far as you can go. Keep your back straight, shoulders back. Now you have options. You can move your head back and forth. You can move your torso back and forth, or you can just enjoy the stretch, be aware of where you're feeling it. And that's that. And we'll do the other side. Right hand on left knee. Left arm behind you is by your fingers. Rotate your shoulders to the short side of the mat. Make sure that you're sitting up straight. Whenever I say that, I hear my mother's voice, sit up straight. <laughs> Remember your options, which you can do or you can not, whatever feels good for you. I personally like to just enjoy this stretch and feel it where I'm feeling it. And I am feeling it in my upper back. You know, right around my shoulder blades area. This is a really good stretch for that area. Maybe move your neck a little. There we go. Come on around. I don't know about you, but whenever I move my neck, I hear all kinds of noise. Oh, yeah. And the third in this rotation, we're going to do a different seating position. So it's called the Z pose. So you can take either your right or your left leg and move it around so your foot is next to your knee. You can either do it, of course, you know, this way or the other way. Doesn't matter. We're going to do both sides. So in this pose, you're going to be leaning a little bit. Unless you put something under your hip, there's, you just can't help yourself. But what we're going to do is where our knee is bent, we're going to put both hands on the floor, floor, mat, and then come down as far as we can comfortably and hold that pose. So it's not only a twist, it's sort of a sort of a slow push-up. So both hands on the mat, doesn't matter where, wherever it is comfortable for you. They can be close, they can be far away. And then come on down, bend your elbows. Come on down as far as is comfortable. You may not be able to come all the way down to the floor, that's okay. You don't wanna round your back in this if you can help it, although you're gonna round just a little bit. If you want, you can even go up and come back down. Or you can just hold it. 
in this position. Now, for me, this hip is up. It's not even touching. That's okay. That's going to help. That's it, 40 seconds. We're going to do the other side now. So take your time getting into position. This is called the Z pose. You know, it's so funny when you're a kid, you can go into these poses and you can sit there and watch TV for hours like this. As an adult, more than five minutes and I'm stiff. <laughs> and that's why we do this. So we aren't stiff. 40 seconds. Okay, so hands on the mat. Now, this may be where you want to stay, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You're still doing a twist. If you want, you can come down further. You can extend your arms and come down further. They can be closer to you. Whatever works for you. You get more stretch if your arms are extended, but it's up to you. And then come down. Come back up. I kind of like to be in the middle. Come down. Come back up. And that's it. 40 seconds. There we go. That went by fast. Okay. What else have I got for you guys? Okay. We're going to do our standing stuff now. So we'll be standing at a wall. So I um, need just a minute to move my computer. So you guys could actually, I don't think I do need to move it. So I'm going to be right here. Okay. Yeah. We're going to start with the back bend at the wall. We've done this before. You can use a wall. You can use a doorway. I personally have a closet door. It's my only wall here. And this is a 40 second hold. So basically we are standing in good posture about three or four inches away from the wall, not right up to it because we're gonna be leaning back just a little. We're gonna come up with our arms, keeping our elbows close to our head and put our palms on the wall. Now, we're going to be extending our chest area, but the hips stay back. So, with that being said, let me get the timer going. Okay, arms up, palms on the wall. I want to lean into the wall a little bit if you choose. Your chest is extended, your hips are back. Your elbows are as close to your head as possible. If you have shoulder issues, they may be further away, and that's fine. Take care of your shoulder. You don't always have to do what I say. You do what works for you. And we're going to hold this. This is a bone-building pose. We're holding this for a full 40 seconds, and that's now over. There we go. Boy, those go by fast. Okay. Now we're going to do the spine twist at the wall. So start with your right side of the wall. Your right foot goes forward. Your left foot goes back. You're still about three or four inches from the wall. Elbows at your sides, palms up. Then you rotate and put your palms on the wall. And we'll hold that position for 40 seconds. Again, it's a bone building move, so that's why we hold it. So elbows at your sides, palms up, rotate, palms on the wall. Try to make them even if you can. So your hips are parallel. Your shoulders are as close to facing the wall as possible. They're, they're not going to face the wall completely. They're just as close as you can. Again, it's a rotation, like when we were sitting. And seven more seconds. And there we are. 
Okay, other side. Left foot forward, right foot back. Elbows at your waist, palms up, rotate towards the wall. Palms on the wall. Try and keep them even. The tendency is going to have the right one higher. Just try to keep them even. And stay here as long as you can. Although we are going to be here for 40 seconds. This is an excellent rotation move. And it's bone building because we're holding it. And there we go. All right. Now this third <clears throat> exercise in this triplet is a core move. We've done this before. So I want to stress, you need to pace yourself. We're going to be doing it for a full minute. So what it is, it's a march at the wall. And we've done this before. Let me adjust this just a little. There we go. You don't need to see my face. No, there it is. <laughs> so you want to hold on to the wall for balance because it's really hard to do this without holding on to the wall. And we're going to march. Now we want to bring our knees up. However, this is a minute long, so pace yourself. You may want to start out very low, like this, if you're not used to doing this. Uh, this is something that I try to do every day, so my knees are way up there. They weren't at first. I had to go like this for like a week before I could actually come up with the knees. So do what works for you. We're going to be a minute. Pace yourself. This is a core move. So here's my timer. And here we go. So bring them as high as is comfortable and your pace. You don't need to be fast. You can be slow and steady. And you can be just like this if you choose, or you can bring your knees all the way up. As long as you're slow and steady, hang on to the wall for balance. It's amazing though, the minute does go by pretty fast. We're already more than halfway through. So this is core work. This works, actually this area right here. And I don't know about you, but I need it. So we got 10 seconds. There we go. All right, how'd you do? Good job. Back to the mat. Well, actually not quite. We're gonna do some squats. We all love our squats. Now, you may want a brick. You may not. It's up to you. I need to adjust, hold on. There we go. So the basic squat, his knees are a little further than your hips. It gives you a good solid base. Now you can use the brick, place it just maybe even with your heels, maybe a little further back, and then just come down with your hips and squat on the block. This will work. You can also lower it as much as you want. We're going to be squatting for one minute. Is it one minute or 30 seconds? <clears throat> we're going to squat for 30 seconds, and then I'm, we're going to do a squat exercise. So whichever way works for you. Now, if you can't even come that far down, just come this far down and then back up whenever you need to. So again, whatever works for you, 
So 30 seconds. If you come all the way down, that's great too. Just whatever, everybody is different. Now the ideal squat position is elbows between the knees, hands in prayer pose. Not everybody is comfortable doing this. I know that. So just do what you can. This is any way you're doing it. Even just going like this is good. And that's 30 seconds. Good job. Now, you'll want a wall or a bookcase or a chair for this next move. You're going to love this. <clears throat> so we're only going to do this a couple of times because it's kind of hard so we're in squat position our legs are or our feet are wider than our hips we have a wide base hang on to whatever it is you're hanging on to a bookcase a counter the wall, something solid. Stick your butt out. The idea is not to have your knees go beyond your feet. So you got to stick your butt out. Come down. And then hanging onto your whatever. Come back up. We're going to do this two more times. Because it's a very hard move. And I understand that. Stick your butt out. Come down. And then come back up. Yeah. Okay. One more. Make sure your knees don't go beyond your toes. That's the important part. Stick your butt out. Come down. Come back up. This is leg work, butt work, core work. That's a really hard one. So good job, guys. Good job. And now, um, oops, I don't know why I did that. We're going to do, we're going to use the chair again. So, okay, you don't need to see my head. Um, we're going to do, it's called sit stand. And this is another good core exercise. So let me demonstrate. We are sitting on, at least in my case, we're sitting on the edge of the chair, probably even if you're not short like I am. Sit on the edge of the chair. Your hands are at your hips. Um, actually, my hands are at the bend where my leg meets my torso. And then stand up. And then sit down. And then stand up and sit down. So we're going to do this for a full minute. Now, a couple of things. When you stand up, do not swing your arms because the inertia will pull you. You want to work that core. When you sit down, try not to plop. Try not to. Um, because again, you want to work your core. So you want to come down. Slowly, stand up, sit down. So we're gonna do this for one minute. Again, your pace, you go slowly, you go quickly, it's up to you. One minute, up, down. Did I say this was really good for the butt? Up <laughs> and down and up and down. Again, you're sticking your butt out because you don't want your knees going beyond your toes. That was kind of a plop, sorry. Okay. And then down and up. And down, and up, 
and down. So I can feel this in my hip flexors, feel it in my quads, hamstrings. That was a full minute, guys. Good job. Let's all take a breath. Those were a couple of really tough ones. So I'm proud of you. Okay, now we're going to go down to the mat. On our backs. Oh, oh, this feels so good after all that. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, you've been doing some good work. Let's just all take a deep breath. Just inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Once more, inhale, exhale. Okay, now we're gonna do, it's called dead bug. I don't know the technical term, but there's a couple of different ways we can do it. I personally like, I'm going to demonstrate crazy dead bug, where you're just waving your arms, waving your legs, doing whatever. Believe it or not, this strengthens core. So you just kind of kick your legs around. Or there is the more coordinated dead bug, where you've got your legs up at tabletop, your arms up, and you're going like this. This is all well and good, and this is a very good exercise, but I personally like the crazy legs. So let's do that one. We're going to do it for one minute. So again, pace yourself because it can get to you. But just at your own pace, you can do it slowly. You can do it quickly. Just wave your arms around, kick your legs. Just do whatever. Pretend you're swimming in the air, dog paddling, in my case, because I can't swim. <laughs> but yeah, we're doing this for one minute. We're just crazy legs, crazy arms. Hey, you know, if you can't have fun with something, why do it? I like having fun with things. Just going crazy. Okay, we got 15 seconds to go. This is actually kind of fun. Crazy, crazy. If you need to stop, stop. If you've had enough, you're out of breath, take a break. There you go. That's it. One minute. Good job. Good job. Now, I'll tell you what. We're going to go ahead and end with that. Um, cause that's, that was a good workout for everybody. So go ahead and get into position for yoga nidra. Make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you're warm enough or cool enough as the case may be. You might even want to put something over your eyes or roll yourself in a blanket I'm going to guide you through a guided med 61 point guided meditation, which will work deeply on your nervous system. Allow your awareness to flow to the points I mentioned without moving any part of your body. Let's begin with your breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Observe your abdomen as it rises and falls with the gentle flow of your breath. Now bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, 
right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, left wrist, thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, left ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, spiritual heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. And this concludes the 61 point guided meditation. Go ahead and stretch your legs out if they're bent. Stretch your arms over your head. Begin to wiggle and stretch. Stretch one side, then the other. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Rotate your wrists and your ankles. First one way and then the other. Now take your right knee and hold it to your chest. Say thank you knee for everything you do. <laughs> Straighten that leg out. Take your left knee and hold it to your chest. Thank you knee, I appreciate you. Straighten that leg out. Now bring both knees up and hold them to your chest while you slowly Rock back and forth, massaging that lower spine and your, your organs in the back. Feels good. When you're ready, roll towards the camera with your lower arm as your head support. We're gonna take a minute here. This is our gratitude minute. We're just gonna think about things that we're grateful for. So for example, I'm grateful for you guys coming to move with me. I probably wouldn't be doing this otherwise. I'd be a slug on the couch. So I'm grateful that I can move with you the way we do. I know a lot of people who have trouble. So just think of something, maybe a couple of things that you're grateful for today.
And when you're ready, come on up to a sitting position. You might want to unmute yourself. I'm going to remove my spotlight, put my view on gallery so I can see everyone. Hands at your heart. We didn't do much shoulder work, but let's press our palms together just for a minute. Feel our shoulders and then loosen it. And I appreciate all of you coming today. It's good to see you, Dana. I haven't seen you in a long time. And let's end the class by saying to each other, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, stop recording.